Oh, I have so much to say, but I, I'm going to start today by kind of just going back to, to honor one of my ancestors, my grandmother. I, um, I once managed to make the trip back to the village that she had uh, been born in, in Italy, in southern Italy. And on part of that journey, broke into Pompeii because we didn't want to pay the fee to get into the park. So, so that was like part of uh, this poem, like reckons back to, you know, the epic nature of volcano in Pompeii. Um, but really, what I, what I want to tell you is if, if you ever find yourself there, you just kind of sneak around, like you just sneak in where the school buses go. I'm just joking around. Uh, but this is a true story about my grandmother, and uh, the last time I, I saw her, she had left her husband. Um, and that will always help me understand that our expectations of the people in our lives, especially when they're later on in their journey, can be so far, so different from what their capacity truly is. <clears throat> Was it a current inside you? The kind of gravity that shows no mercy when you left him were the tides up to the crest of your uvula? Did you say his name with the finality of Pompeii? And did he throw Jesus at your luggage? Quote your age like a forecast, say un estrega, say tanta sai. You were 76. Did you laugh then at his diabetic needles, his who will feed me, finally unleash your flock of Florence nightingales as you walked goddess to the greyhound. Grandmother, how does it feel to walk away when your legs are a vineyard of varicose? I pray it is like stomping grapes for rich vintage, a bouquet of beautiful destruction, that you did not shudder at the ticket counter when you said one way. Arthritis in your feet, brown leather suitcase, no Bible. Wedding ring left on the nightstand like dentures, Catholicism, an old set of teeth you sped. Through miles of dead volcano we call the Canadian shield. Did it make you feel safe? The way arranged marriages and immigration officers made you feel safe. Like a parcel to be kept beneath lock and key. But you come from the Turanian Sea, where Vulcan god of fire laced magma in his children's blood. What is dormant is not dead, it rises like Vesuvius. No steel stops a fissure in the earth's crust, and no fist. Did he forget what he was up against? Sayun Strega, old woman, hag, sorceress, Nona. I wanted to be small, despite the mausoleum inside me all witch cackle and hiss. I wanted to fit inside the quiet of an oven. I wanted small arms. I wanted them so bad I refused your olives, but still woke with the ulnas of a miner, the biceps of Poseidon, these gestures of a storm. You have made me so bad at hiding my anger. Thank you. You sat in my mother's kitchen and joked about the life of single women. This is the last time I saw you. Fat Calabre's arms, almond-shaped eyes, unmovable as a mountain. But like a visit from Persephone, you returned to him at the end of the season. Died of a heart-hard fossilized magma. There are things we are scared to ask the living. So I never asked you, how a woman walks away from a lifetime of coercion. But I imagine you might say, Sion Estrega, you are a witch. Listen to the lava flowing molten within your skin. It never denies how powerful it is. Thank you. Man. Um, 
So all the poems I'm going to do today are really um, gestures towards uh, artists and women who have been really formative and transformational for me. Um, I, I really believe that the mark of a brilliant teacher is, is not just that they, they show you or tell you something, but that they create opportunities for discovery and epiphany. And Sherry D, that has so been my experience in, in knowing you, in reading your work, and witnessing you as a performer, as a teacher, and also in this festival every year when I managed every, every event that I sit in the audience at is this invitation to discovery and epiphany and reflection of, of what happens in this world and moving forward. So thank you so much for having me here and for everything you create in our community with your art and your organizing so much. Um, this next poem is uh, it's just a short, a short work. I, I work with the tarot a lot and uh, created a deck recently, uh, a feminist deck, and uh, the hermit card is, is Georgia O'Keeffe. So the quote for this piece is, slits in nothingness are not very easy to paint. One day yellow flowers will blossom beside your yellow bones and yellow sun will laugh over the ghost of you. A slice of lemon, daffodil, urine, dust bones, and old linen. How many shades did you study? Or did the hollyhock unfold itself beneath your horsehair brush like water leaks from rain barrels? It just looked so pretty, you said. Stop asking me about God, you might have added. Gender and God don't matter. It's quiet here. That's the only church I care for. Georgia, the more you turned into the desert, the more photographs we took of your quiet, the more questions we asked. But you spoke only color, easel sunk in umber, more in love with silence than love a crone who knew the beauty of cattle bones and copper. Some say death is always waiting on our left shoulder, like a moth fluttering quiet in the ear. Is the sound more exquisite the closer you listen? There's no fear in it, your slate blue and hollyhock, the sharp skull of a ram you found. One day yellow flowers will blossom beside your yellow bones, and yellow sun will laugh over the ghost of you. Isn't that the miracle? Isn't that the only thing worth painting? Thank you. Um, I'm going to do another short one. This is one of the pieces of mine that um, so graciously been published in the book. <clears throat> There is a grace to skeletons we cannot read in each other's bodies. Just look at the dinosaurs, their clumsiness extinct. One can almost taste the wind under pterodactyl wings. The spaces God once fit, his fingers poking out the ribs like a schoolyard bully. The first time I watched a woman sleep, I saw the ape we each hold in our bodies, fists like hot corn kernels, unwilling to open, the fits, shivers, and slack bellies. There is so little we decide, all this time spent sleeping, trimming nails and grooming each other. It's not our own beauty. We are here to write gospel in the hallelujahs of our bodies. No asteroid, sees its own rock burn. Okay, I have one last one for you. Um, it is again for, for an artist that has been an incredible inspiration for me. Um, 
as an artist, as a human, <laughs> as a spirit. And I'm lucky enough to be in the same room as my collaborator, Mo Clark, um, who, who worked with me on this piece when we originally conceived of it and wrote it. Um, so it has uh, incarnation uh, by itself with me and then a piece that works together with Mo when we are Raven Sara. Um, <clears throat> yeah. In a country guarded by the Virgin of Guadalupe, she was a sacred heart with the jawbone of Picasso, don't fuck with me hands, and a neck that begged to be kissed. Even after the accident that sent a 10-foot pole through her pelvis, Frida Kahlo raised Trotsky up the Pyramid of the Sun and won. I was told by a lover in Mexico that Diego Rivera will always be the painter of the people. But I have seen myself in Frida's mirror, up on 56th and 3rd in a museum so vital it may one day become a life raft. And trust me, the painter of my people is one who drew herself so clearly no one could deny the beauty of her mustache. This is how truth is painted. In traction, refusing medicine until a blank canvas is brought forth when each stroke cuts like a knife. You only paint what is necessary. Boca, ojos, corazón, sharp metal braces, and the half body which survives between sky and self. There were times Diego lay with her like a compass. And there were times Diego lied to her, marrying his lips to a thousand vulvas, wedding the city with her sister's name. Christina. So she spun like a needle with no north until she needed no north up the skirts of Parisian burlesque dancers down the pants of famous communists wearing the flowers of her people's revolution like a diadem till the scent of violets felt like loneliness and hyacinths made her wet. It was a bridge between her and her husband's homes, like the valve between heart chambers. But in those years, it remained closed, as she ate from the mouths of beautiful strangers like a bird. But she was rattlesnake, hungry, feral, and hungry infrequently, embracing the shake of death which followed her. In a country that honors the power of their dead, there are those who call Frida Our Lady. They have painted a mantle of light to her brow and count rosary to her oils, knowing she painted from death's cradle with holy ochre, sacred red, and one way to explain the slow process of dying. These are the flowers she gave herself. These are the paintings she offered us, the portraits of a woman becoming history, the strokes of one who kisses death but slaps her lover in the meantime, saying, love me, love me better while you can. Thank you so much.